Yo, what's going on? It's Vishal Patel from VP Media and I'm really excited about today's video because I'm going to be revealing my seven step blueprint uh, to Facebook ads for realtors. Okay, so before I jump into the video, I just want to give a massive shout out to Shane Hillier and Matt Kramer because a lot of the concepts that I'm going to go over today, I've been able to learn from them. So what is this seven step blueprint? Well, I like to call it the moved in model. Okay, moved in and you're going to see it on your screen here. And I'm going to break down each one uh, in detail, but just to give you a very quick high level overview, the M stands for medium price. The O stands for outstanding picture. The V stands for very compelling copy. The E stands for establishing the call to action. The D stands for demographic. The I stands for input. And the N stands for notification. Okay then, let's start off with the letter M, which is the media price. and. The biggest desire when it comes to somebody buying a property is actually going to be the, the price. Okay, that's the first thing that someone is going to look at when it comes to a buying decision on a property. Um, and you know, I've spoken to some of the top marketers in real estate, and they've all come back and said, "Yes, it's the price that's got the biggest variable on whether or not someone is interested in a particular property." So, what you need to do. Um, and you might already have this information is to figure out the medium price in a certain location okay so let's say we're based in London in Camden so what you want to do is find out what the medium um, home value is in that area and then you want to go slightly under in your ad okay so let's say the medium value in this location is five hundred thousand dollars okay what you then want to do is find properties that you can use in your ad which is slightly under that medium value okay because if it's slightly under then you know people are going to think they're getting more value for their money and therefore more inclined inclined to click on your ad and that's also going to allow you to target the largest possible audience in that certain location okay because the goal of our ad is to get as many leads um, through our ad as possible Okay. and by having a, uh, the medium price slightly below on our ad okay we're going to be able to target as many people in that location and in the actual ad itself you also want to include the price of that house or the the list of house that are uh, available for sale you want to put it in the first or the second sentence and you want to make it very clear okay so you know it could be um, uh, just listed ten thousand dollars under the average price in this location um, you know something like that and remember people are looking for the best value in town okay or the best value in that location it doesn't mean that they're gonna buy that property or, or one of those properties that you have in your ad okay it means that they're interested and that's what you need um, for a Facebook lead as, as long as they're interested okay you can then in your follow-up later on you know, nurture that relationship with them and hopefully they'll um, then purchase later on down the line step two of the moved in model is the O and that is having outstanding pictures okay they really do have to be super high quality and um, the reason for that is because a picture speaks you know a thousand words and when your ideal client is going to bed at night and they're dreaming of this this uh, vision that they have of where they want to live with their family in the future okay, you need to paint that picture using your Facebook ad and sometimes what can happen is you know real estate agents have run ads in the past or you might have run a Facebook ad in the past and you've had no success with it and one of those reasons could be because the picture that you choose was just garbage okay um, so that's why it's really important that you pick a very high quality image or if it's a home list where you've got multiple images you have to make sure that all of them are very high quality you know the weather is good the detail is good it's clean there's no like rubbish outside of the property 
um, and really paint that pinch, paint that picture for your client so that they have to click on the ad. Step three, and that is the V, and that's having very compelling copy. So the copy is the, the text or the description that you're gonna have in your Facebook ad, and it serves multiple purposes. So the first thing that you wanna do with your copy is call out your audience, you know, so it could be hello London home um, buyers or hello Orlando home buyers. You then wanna talk about the pricing or the budget, so uh, what I talked about earlier in the video, okay, you wanna have in that first or second sentence, the price of the, the property or the, the properties even, the average price. And obviously you wanna make that um, slightly below the median price in that area. And you wanna uh, make it clear, you know, $10,000 below the average price in this location. You also wanna include the key details and the highlights of the property, or if it's a list of properties, then the, the key highlights of those properties, you know, does it come with a swim swimming pool? Does it have a large, uh, uh, master bedroom does it have an ensuite the key things you want to pick out and also be mindful of you know who is going to see this ad most likely it's going to be uh, you know a family that is going to be looking to buy their first property so you want to make sure that you're speaking to them okay that's kind of who your ideal avatar is you also want to include some pain points and some challenges uh, in there as well you know so um, you know instead of paying your real estate agent thousands of dollars um, you don't have to with us or something like that you also want to have a very clear call to action you know what do they need to do on the ad do you know do they have to click on here do they have to type over here you want to make that very clear and also have some scarcity you know say that uh, the the bookings are starting to fill up and we only have very limited amounts of viewings available in the next couple of weeks so make sure you secure your spot right now okay really important that you have some kind of scarcity in there as well step four which is the e and that's establishing the call to action so i talked about this in my previous point but it's really important that you make it crystal clear what your audience has to do in order to progress with the ad so if it's a facebook ad very likely there's going to be a learn more button or a sign up button but you have to tell your audience that they have to click on that so in the copy okay you want to have something that says just click on the learn more button down below um, in your headline you could also have um, something that says just click on the learn more button on the right hand side or something like that okay really important that you make it crystal clear about what they need to do next and just to add to that point actually it's not only on the ad it's also everything that happens after the ad you know the ad is just the first point but let's say they go to a landing page or a form where we're going to capture their information we want to make it clear what information we need and how to then submit that information what's going to happen next you know are they going to get a phone call are we going to send them to a chat bar um, you know all of this stuff you need to make it very clear to them step five and that's d so that is the demographic or who are we specifically targeting with this ad. So it's really important when you're setting up your campaign that you are targeting the correct areas. You know, so let's say we're running an ad in New York, okay? It's really important that we highlight specifically which part of New York, you know, we wanna target. And you would test this, you know, you would test uh, a range that's closer to, let's say, the city and then the outskirts and even the suburbs and you would test kind of each one depending on where you're selling the property. You then want to select the age range and the highest uh, people that are buying houses at the moment are first-hand buyers and they're usually in the ages between 30 and uh, in their 30s and in their 40s so you can set an age range between 25 and 45 that's usually uh, a good age range to go with. You would then also want to test a broad target audience and also a very targeted audience so broad can be mean so broad can mean when you're targeting a certain area and let's say just families <clears throat> and then slightly more targeted is going to be the targeting that same area their families but they're also you know interested in properties they're uh, looking to buy a house they are they have children perhaps they are interested in um, something to do with real estate perhaps okay so now that's 
you know, your audience size might not be as large, but they're going to be slightly more uh, targeted leads. I would also suggest excluding realtors, okay? Because, you know, they're not really in the market of buying their first property for themselves, okay? So you can also exclude anyone that's associated with uh, real estate, okay, so real estate agents, real estate investors, you can exclude all of those and just target, you know, those first time home buyers. In addition to that, I'd also suggest selecting the Wi Fi option so that your ad is only shown to people that are on Wi Fi. And the reason for that is because let's say a lead comes in, that information is then um, passed on to either yourself or your team, okay, we want to follow up with that lead on a phone call. And if they're on Wi-Fi, it's more likely that they're going to be at home in a more relaxed environment and therefore able to have a conversation with you. If they're not, then it could be that they're out shopping and, and busy doing something and therefore less likely to, to get on the phone and have a conversation with you to arrange that booking. So I'd also suggest having the Wi-Fi option turned on. Finally, when it comes to demographic is your audience size. Okay, you want to try and have an audience size of above 100,000. Okay, if it's less than that, then you're not really going to have enough people to target. And if it's significantly greater than that, than that, then it means your targeting is just going to be too broad. Step six, and that's the I, and that is input. Okay, and this is probably one of the most important parts of your ad because this is the part where we're actually capturing the information of this lead. Okay, and we can select, you know, we can decide what information we want to collect. But typically what I would suggest is collecting their, their full name. Okay, first name, second name, their email address so that we can follow up via email. And also really, really important and uh, people f forget this for some reason when it comes to Facebook leads is their phone number. Okay, because this is the best way to get people to arrange, you know, a house viewing that same day or even that same week is getting on the phone with them as soon as possible and, and you know, having yourself or your team arrange that viewing as soon as possible. And so I would always suggest um, getting the phone number and you may also want to find out when they're looking to buy. You know, it could be that they're looking to buy straight away and therefore you want to have more urgency with that lead. It could be that they're looking to buy in six months and you might not need to press as hard with that specific lead. So really important that you capture the right information uh, and you can use something like a lead form, um, which is within Facebook, or you can even create a separate opt-in page using a tool like ClickFunnels. Um, so you can capture that information and then have that moved into your database. So step number seven is the N and that's being notified. Okay. and. Another way of looking at it is automating this uh, system that you're gonna create, okay? So your lead generation system and making sure that you're notified with the correct information in the correct way, okay? So typically, um, you know, you wanna get an email of when a new lead comes in each time. You may also wanna get a text message each time a lead comes in. And you also wanna be building your pipeline or your, your database full of these leads that are coming in um, through, through your ads, okay? And you wanna automate that whole process. You may also wanna you know, hire a team that can follow up with these calls. Um, but really the importance of this final step is automating it and also getting the correct information and making sure you have access to that information so that you or your team can follow up with them via email, via the phone, via a chatbot, or, or, or any other medium that you might want to use text message even um, and so that you know you can make the most out of that lead and therefore make the most out of your um, budgets on advertising all right so that is the seven step framework for facebook advertising for realtors and just to recap it's called moved in okay i'm going to be talking a lot more about it in my videos going forward the m stands for the medium price the o stands for outstanding pictures the v stands for very compelling copy the e stands for establishing the call to action the i stands for input and the n stands for notifications hopefully by now you should have a lot more confidence when it comes to running your facebook ad campaigns for your real estate business if you want some help in setting this up and need some help running your campaigns then feel free to fill out the application form in the description and we'll have a look at your application and potentially jump on a phone call and see if we're a good fit 
With that being said, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe because it helps the channel out. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.